In this video, I want to look again at the parent-child function. So it's a bit of a review of that function, but I want to look at it in a slightly different context. Before, the main reason uh, that, I, that, that I looked at the parent function was to take a DOM element that I generated in code and insert it into another place in sort of the existing HTML. So, which was fine. And then to do that, you just you reference the ID of an HTML element. Here, I want to look at how do you use the parent-child function with elements that you've generated in code, which is ultimately the same thing, but it's another chance to look at it. And just also, it's to make the point, by the way, the thing you can pass into that parent or child function is a P5 variable that has a reference to a DOM element. So you know, that, that explanation may not have made any sense. Let's look at an example that I've started to get some context here. So um, actually, let's just look. So what's going to be, this is, by the way, the HTML file is empty. So everything in this example, I'm generating through code. So first, I made a make a paragraph that says, this is a link. It has a little gray background and a little bit of padding. Then I make a link, an anchor tag, with the word apples. And I'm handling if you click on that tag with an event called add photo. And that add photo function uh, generates a image element. Boy, a lot of stuff going on there. So, right? First, we have the paragraph element that's made here. Then I have the link element that's made here. And when I click on that link, an image appears, which is happens uh, down here. Image, create image. Now, this is important. This is different than load image. I'm like looking, where am I looking at? Ah, this is different than load image. Load image is something I looked at in previous videos where you load a file and then draw that file into your canvas. Here, the create image function actually makes an image DOM element, just like you might type in HTML, image source equals. And this source equals could be the name of the image file, or it could actually be a full URL to another image. So this is a way of inserting an image as its own DOM element separate from drawing an image to the canvas on the page. That's kind of an interesting topic of how you might do things with that in a, for another time. But here, just showing you yet another create function, another HTML tag, the image tag source being the attribute, what is that image's source? And uh, over here, so we can see the result of all of this. Uh, again, I'm going to look at the output here. Click, click, click. So what I want to see happen is I want this beautiful gray padded box. I want the link to the apples, the apples clicking thing to be in that box. And I want those apples to get inserted also in that box. I want everything to be in that box. So here we look at and say P is the object that is the paragraph. A is the object, the DOM element object, which is actually a P5 element object. A is the link, and image is the image. So if I wanted A to go into P, and this, by the way, I get this confused all the time. Which one is it? A dot parent P, or is it P dot parent A? You could make a case for both of those, right? You could make a case for you want A to be parented by P, or you want P to parent A. Which one was it? I honestly can't remember, because now that I'm even like asking this question, I confused myself. So my, let's go with my first instinct, which is that I want A to have as its parent P. The action is being applied to A, and the action is make its parent P. I'm pretty sure that's right. And you can see there that worked. So now the apples link is inside the paragraph. So the difference is it appears up there rather than as a separate thing below. And now when I click apples, those images get added below, which actually is maybe a nice effect. But what I could say is also like image.parent p. So now, and I've got a problem again. As soon as I do this, what's wrong? This is not a global variable. So I don't have access to that variable scope down here. So I'm going to make that a global variable. And I'm going to say p equals create p. And I'm going to run this. And now when I click apples, those images are now also inside that paragraph element. So this is just, and incidentally, let's just, let's just remind ourselves, I could have said p.child image. And this, if my mind is working correctly, these are identical. I want image to be parented by the paragraph, or I want the paragraph to 
child the image, right? So that's the action, that's the way of thinking about it. Honestly, a better way of thinking about it would be to look it up in the P5.js documentation. I will include a link to that below and I'm sure it will say it there. But this is something that certainly does confuse me. Um, but uh, in general, I stick to the parent function. Um, and there you go. So this is a scenario that you are looking at. Now, I, um, I want to look at this also because I think we could kind of raise the stakes here a little bit. So this is probably a good place to stop watching this video, but I'm gonna go on anyway. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a whole lot of these. Like what if I make a whole bunch of these? Let's think about this. Four var i equals zero, i is less than uh, five. Let's just do five for right now, i plus plus. And I'm gonna put a loop around all of this code. And I don't, I don't want the global variable anymore. And here, I'm gonna comment this, I'm gonna comment out what's going on here. So first, I just wanna see the result here. So the nice thing that you can see here is this principle still applies. Right now, we're making a paragraph, a link. Link gets parented by that paragraph. Another paragraph, a link. Link gets parented by that paragraph. Now for you, I might say as an exercise, could you make each one of these paragraphs have different content? <laughs> could you make one a link called apples and one a link called blueberries? one a, a link called bananas, bananas, depending on where you are in the world. Um, <clears throat> um, but uh, so that might be something that you add to yourself and maybe I'll work on that another time. So, but the point of this now is this is a nice opportunity for us to remind ourselves that now this add photo callback when it's triggered, what if I want to do the same thing? What if I want to get the images inside, right? When I click on this one, the images should appear inside that one. When I click on this one, the images should appear inside that one. This is a pretty tricky problem, but it is doable and it uses something that you haven't used before that I'm excited to show you. So let's see how we can make this work. So the question is, what do I put here? So first let's ask the question, what do I even have access to? Well, I have access to the keyword this. Do you remember that keyword, this? What is this referring to? It's referring to the DOM element that triggered the callback add photo. The specific one, A. So the link, so this would be parenting the image by the link. And we could do that. And let's run that. And let's see if that at least gives us something. So that actually is working. The weird thing is this is actually part of the link, which is kind of an interesting effect. All of these are part of that same link. I click on any of them, I keep adding. But I wanted them to be separate, just inserted into the paragraph, right? So this works, it's nice. How could I get access to the paragraph? Okay, let's, let's make a diagram. So over here, let's think about what's actually on the page. I have paragraph, which has inside it an anchor, followed by another paragraph, which has inside it an anchor. So what I previously just did is I took that image and inserted it, the image of the apple, and inserted it as part of the anchor. But what I want to do <laughs> is I want to take that image and insert it as part of the paragraph. Paragraph is a child of body. Anchor is a child of paragraph. And my new image, I want to insert as a child of paragraph. But the only thing I have is a reference is to this. Well, what if I could reference this anchor tag and ask, hey, who's your parent? Who, where's your, it's like when you're at the playground and a, there's a child who's doing something and you say, where's your, you don't want to know about this, but I spend a lot of time with my own children in the playground and this sort of like relates to it in a second, but then it's like a weird thing that I'm talking about. So back to this. <laughs> I want to know who's your parent, A, eh? And so there's a way that P5 will give you that, right? If I say parent with a argument, I'm saying assign this element's parent to this other element. If I say parent, with no argument, parent blank, I'm asking P5 to tell me who the current parent is. So look at this. Come back over here. I can say, now I can say var paragraph equals image, uh, sorry, this dot parent. 
This is me asking this, you're the anchor tag, this anchor tag, who is your parent? Oh, your parent is this paragraph? Great, make the image part of that paragraph. And I'm now going to run this and you can see, ta-da, I mean, it looks the same, but this is no longer a link. So it's now been parented by the paragraph. And by the way, uh, so this is sort of the end of this, uh, except I actually have a couple things I wanted to add. <laughs> There's another thing I wanted to add to this, which I think would be interesting. Oh, I got, this is great. I'm gonna add something to this one I think would be interesting. Uh, let's just do that now. I have something else that I want to show you towards the end of this video. We're already 10 minutes in, but there's a few, this is, this is going sort of well, so I'm not ready to stop just yet. So let's, let's add, what I want to add to this is something like, okay, so what I want to add, and let's put this in the HTML file, uh, which has some extra style stuff that I'm not using. Take that out. Um, let me add a button. Button ID equals clear, clear, and I'm going to say clear images. So I want to add to the body of the page, and I'll put it inside a paragraph, just so it has some padding around it. I want to add onto the page a button at the top, and that button is clear images. And when I press that button, I want to remove all the images that have been added. How do I do this? Now, in theory, oh, you know, there's a bunch of, let's think about this for a second. Oh, so there's an inch, there's an, there's actually a quick way that I could do this without even the way that I was thinking I was going to do this. So there's two different ways we could think about this. Number one is let's come back to this diagram. Now that this is working, let's think about what we have. A paragraph with an anchor inside it and an image and maybe another image, right? Another paragraph with an anchor inside it and an image, right? We have a bunch of paragraph elements with things inside of it. And I want to just, how can I find all of the images on the page? That's right. Give me all the images on the page. Well, here's a way I could find all the images on the page. You know about this because I did this in a previous video. Select all IMG. Select all IMG would suddenly give you an array of all the image elements anywhere on the page, no matter where they are in that page. So this is useful. If I could get all those images elements, maybe I could do something to remove them all from the page. So while I could do it this way, and I'll say you do it this way, after you watch this video, if you're following along, do it with select all as an exercise. I'm gonna do it a slightly different way because sometimes you might not be able to easily use select all in what you're doing. What if instead you just kept your own array of DOM elements? And this is not an uncommon practice. Uh, Actually, I don't know what a common or uncommon practice is because I don't do any of this for real. I'm just figuring it out and making videos about it. So it's not an uncommon practice in my making video examples about it. Anyway, so if I come back to the code, I might say var images equals array. So I'm creating a global variable that's an array where anytime I make one of these elements, I'll store a version of it. So I have this for myself. And in that case, anytime I make an image element, I can say image dot push, I'm sorry, images dot push image. So this is me adding that image object to this array, which is a global variable. So now anywhere in this code, I have access to all of those image objects. This can be very useful because for example, um, I, could, I could do something, I could remove, oh, I could remove them one at a time which would be kind of an interesting thing to do. We could, we could do that. Or I could remove them all at once. I could apply a style to all of them. Let's look at just removing them all at once. So albeit this is an array that I could fill with select all, I'm making it myself. So let's take a look at uh, how I might do this. So first of all, what's on the page? There's this button. How do I get access to that button? That button is made in the HTML file with an ID called clear. So I just need to use select. So I need to say var button equals select button. Oh no, I called it clear. And then I want to handle when it's pressed with, I don't know, clear stuff. I'll write a function called clear stuff. And here is where I can do a loop. I already have that array that has all the image objects in it for index i from zero to the length of the array. So for every single element in that array, uh, what was it called? Uh, images.length i++. Plus plus. Now this images index i dot something. 
So right here, now I know it's showing me syntax errors, but this is now me saying, I, whenever I made an image element, I put it into that array. Hooray for me. So now I have this like back, it's like a backup. It's like redundancy. Like I just, I'm making all these elements and in case I ever need to refer back to them, I've got them all in this array. Sure, I could get them with select all, but I'm really cautious and worried about it. I'm gonna make my own array. So now I could apply a style to them. I could change their source to show a different image. But just to demonstrate removing stuff, that's, uh, there's a P5 DOM library function called remove. And what remove does is actually removes it from the page, which by the way is different than hide. So I could use hide, which is going to hide it, make it so you don't see it, but the element is still actually there as part of the sort of like active page, so it could show it again. If I remove it, it's gone, it's deleted, it's not coming back. So let's not worry about hide so much right now, let's add remove. So all that I've done is now anytime I add one of these images, all of those images, wherever they've been added, all of those images are now part of this array. So now, all I need to do when I hit clear is it will loop through the whole array and remove them all. And there you go. And now I can add some more again. And I can hit clear and it works again. Now one thing I probably should do is once I've actually removed them, I could probably reset the array back to blank. It worked anyway, but I might want to just sort of like clear that array because I don't need references to those objects which have now since been removed. So this is hopefully showing you a bit more of stuff that you can do. This is kind of showing you, again, just to sort of recap a little bit, I can make stuff in the HTML file and access it through select by an ID, like I did with that button. I can make elements dynamically in a loop, like I did with create P, and then I can also make other elements, parent them to those elements, and have things inside. Then later, I could make elements that are based on an event, and I could know which DOM element triggered that event, and then I could know What's the parent of that DOM element that triggered the event and put other things in that DOM element? So there's a lot of pieces to this example, but hopefully this is showing you kind of a bit of the spectrum now of how you might write HTML, write JavaScript to generate control, style, select, select all, that sort of thing. I think I have um, two more uh, videos that I want to make. One is about how you might drag and drop a file into the browser and use the contents of that file. And then I keep looking over here because I'm looking at the time. And then another uh, video just to show you about sort of controlling interface elements kind of in a zombified way so they just like act on their own which I think is kind of interesting. So uh, that's the end of this particular rather long 17 minute video and I'll be back with another one.